In this video, we'll be discussing the anatomy of the hair follicle, the different types of hair, the phases of the hair cycle, and at the end, we'll be busting some hair myths that a lot of people believe in. Let's begin. Before we talk about the hair growth cycle, let's take a closer look at the anatomy of the hair follicle. The outermost layer of the skin is the epidermis, followed by the dermis, and then comes the hypodermis or subcutaneous tissue. The hair follicle is basically a portion of epidermis extending into the dermis that surrounds the hair. The erector pili is a band of smooth muscle that contracts to make the hair stand on end and cause goosebumps. The hair shaft has three layers. The medulla is the innermost layer, outside that is the cortex, and the outermost layer is the cuticle. The dermal papilla consists of mesenchymal cells, and this is the area where the blood supply comes into the hair follicle. The hair matrix contains keratinocytes undergoing rapid mitosis, as well as melanocytes, which give color to the hair. The inner root sheath helps keep the hair fiber firmly glued into the scalp. The outer root sheath is continuous with the epidermal layer. This gland here is the sebaceous gland, which produces sebum. There are three different types of hair that we humans have. The first is lanugo hair, which is soft, fine hair that covers much of the fetus. It usually sheds before birth. The second type is vellus hair, which is fine, non-pigmented hair that covers the body of children and adults. Their growth is not affected by hormones. The third type is terminal hair. These are thick, pigmented hair found on the scalp, beard, axilla, and pubic area and their growth is influenced by hormones. Eyebrow and eyelash hair are also terminal hair. Moving on to the phases of the hair cycle. The first phase is the anagen phase, which is a phase of active growth, and it lasts for about two to six years. During this phase, the cells in the hair root are rapidly dividing, so more new hair is formed. Next is the catagen phase, which is a transition phase that lasts for one to two weeks. During this phase, the hair transitions upwards towards the skin pore and dermal papilla begins to separate from the follicle. The telogen phase is the resting phase, which lasts for two to four months. And during this time, the dermal papilla fully separates from the hair follicle, as shown in this diagram. The exogen phase is the shedding phase, during which the dermal papilla moves upwards and the hair matrix begins to form new hair. And now for my favorite part. Let's bust some hair myths together. The first myth is that washing your hair every day will make your scalp more oily. This is absolutely false. How much oil your scalp produces is predetermined by factors like genetics and hormones. So any external hair care practices like washing or anything that you're using on your scalp cannot train your scalp to make more or less oil. The second myth is that if you pluck out one gray hair, two will grow in its place. This is absolutely false. Manipulation of a gray hair by plucking, cutting, or shaving it does not make two grow in its place. Moving on to the third myth, more frequent hair trimming will make your hair grow faster. This is incorrect. Hair growth initiates at the scalp, so any manipulation at the ends of your hair is going to have zero effect on the speed of hair growth. The fourth myth is that long hair absorbs all nutrients and doesn't let your body grow or that it stunts your height. This is absolutely wrong. Whether you keep your hair long or short doesn't influence how much protein is used up in your hair. Hair only grows at the roots that do at a speed of half an inch per month and only the growing inch requires nutrients. Beyond that, your hair is actually dead tissue that doesn't require any nutrition. Long hair don't consume any extra nutrients at all. The fifth myth is that shampooing causes extra hair loss. This is incorrect. Shampooing simply dislodges hair that were sitting loosely in their hair follicle and were ready to fall out. It's normal to lose up to 50 to 100 hair strands a day. The last myth is that you can repair a split end. This is absolutely wrong, since hair at the ends is dead tissue, so it can't regenerate or heal. Once it's split, it's split. 
The only way to deal with it is to cut it.